morning, Lake Park. I hope you're doing well. It is a crazy time in this Easter season. It's so hard not to be with you. It really is, and it seems as if it's just getting longer and longer. Today, we have a story of Thomas and the disciples as they, in this first week of Easter, are gathered behind closed doors. There are strange blessings, though, as we'll find in the gospel, and as I think we find ourselves in this time of being behind closed doors. Blessings that we've had as a community, I can't tell you how grateful I am for you and for our amazing Holy Week that we had. In a strange way, we were able to reach out to so many more people this last Holy Week. Thousands of you watched these digital services, and we were able to share them with family and friends throughout the country. I'm also, before we begin the service today, just want to say a deep sense of gratitude to all of you. I am truly overwhelmed by your generosity in service, in monetary gifts, and in just help of the congregation in this time. Today's service is a bit simpler than our Holy Week ones, but there are special treats in it. Um, Pastor Alyssa has a great sermon on Thomas and the disciples. Jeff Bray has a special offering of music for you. Chris is going to lead us in a song of Alleluia. It's a blessing to be together, even if it has to be digitally in this time. Let's begin our service with a word of prayer. You can follow along in the bulletin that you got in our weekend update. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jeff, I pass it on to you for your song. Thanks so much. Discover a soul saving love, or just the dirt above and below me. I'm a doubting Thomas. I took a promise. I do not feel safe. Oh, me ever live. I pray for a slap in the face Then I beg to be spared Cause I'm a coward If there's a master of death I bet he's holding his breath Cause I show the blind Tell the deaf about his power Cause I'm a doubting Thomas I can't keep my promises Cause I don't know what's safe Hold me up a little Please forgive me for the time 
I'm a doubting Thomas I'll pick your promise Though I know nothing changed Only ever The gospel for today comes from the book of John. When it was evening on that first day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Last Sunday on Easter, we heard the story of how Mary encountered Jesus in the garden outside of the tomb and went back to tell the rest of the disciples the good news. She said, I have seen the Lord. But this week we get the rest of the story and it gets a bit more complicated. In today's story, we hear how on that same day, the first day of the week, the disciples are huddled together in a locked room. Some of them have seen the empty tomb and all of them have heard Mary's report. But hearing the good news doesn't erase fear. Hearing that Jesus is alive answers some questions, but it introduces a whole lot more questions. Fearful and afraid, the disciples are unsure of what to make of all of this news. The Jesus they loved was killed, and that was hard enough to process. But now, apparently, he's alive, but not in the same way. I bet they were wondering what weird thing is going to happen to us next. Are the religious leaders looking for us? Will we be questioned by the authorities? And so they have locked themselves at home. And it's in that locked room through closed doors that somehow Jesus comes and appears to the disciples right smack in the middle of their fear and loss, right in the middle of their confusion Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. And then without any prompting, Jesus shows him his wounds on his hands and in his side to prove his identity. And then he breathes on them, commissioning them to take over this ministry in the world. If I were in that room, if I saw the resurrected body of Jesus appear through locked doors, if I saw this resurrected body of Jesus that had real skin and real wounds, I'm not sure if I would be relieved by this encounter or if I would be more afraid, more confused. There's one person, though, who missed out on this whole weird thing, Thomas. 
When Thomas hears about what went down in that room, he's disappointed and understandably he's jealous. He missed out on a pretty incredible experience. It's one thing to hear about it later, but it's a whole nother thing to be there. And he wants that. He wants to be able to see with his own eyes and touch and feel with his own hands and hear with his own ears the voice of Jesus. He doesn't want to just know about it. He wants to have been in the room where it happened. And who could blame him? A week later, Thomas is with the disciples in the same house. The doors are locked just as before, and Jesus appears, saying those same words, peace be with you. Jesus invites Thomas to see, to touch, and to believe. And Thomas gets what he needs. Jesus shows up for him. Each of the characters in this story experience the resurrection and good news in waves. They don't all see Jesus at once. They certainly don't all believe all at once. Their movement from grief to hope happens at different paces. I love that about this story because it feels very honest. That feels very much how the good news of Easter happens. For Mary in the garden, she saw Jesus and believed. She snapped from grief to hope in a millisecond. The disciples heard the good news to Jesus's resurrection, but they didn't erase their fears. They, they were still confused. They were still afraid. And they didn't really start to believe until they saw Jesus. And then of course there's Thomas. Thomas had heard the news, but he couldn't get his hopes up until he saw Jesus for himself. Maybe for you this year, you feel like Mary. Maybe the good news and the brightness and hope of Easter has turned you around and changed your grief to joy all at once. But my guess is that for many of us, our experience is far more like the disciples and like Thomas this year. We've heard the good news of Easter, but it doesn't mean that we aren't scared. It hasn't erased our fear. We know that Jesus has risen from the dead, but it doesn't mean that we believe it or that we actually know what resurrection means for us, how it would change anything about these challenging times that we're living in. Just because Easter has happened doesn't mean that we aren't huddled around, frozen in fear. Like the disciples, we're all having this life-shifting experience, but we aren't all responding and processing it the same way. In the midst of this world turned upside down, our ability to see and touch hope fluctuates by the minute, and it hits all of us differently. Hope and belief, these things, they come in waves, ebbing and flowing. Maybe sometimes it feels like you're seeing and touching hope and comfort. And maybe there are other days when fear and frustration feel closer at hand. That's okay. Because today's story isn't about how we muster up hope or belief. The story we get today is about what happens when we can't seem to find any. In our fear, in our doubt and confusion, in our frustration, in our irritation at our political system, when we're bored at home, or maybe bickering with our family behind closed doors, Jesus shows up. That's the good news. Amen. Oh,
happy for you all the way. Alleluia, Christ is a risen. Bright is the dawning of the Lord's day. Thomas, where were you on that evening? I'll not believe unless I see. Christ comes again and every Lord's day Touch me and see, have faith in me Alleluia, Christ is arisen Bright is the dawning of the Lord's day Alleluia, Christ is arisen Bright is the dawning So today for our prayers, we're going to invite you to do something a little bit different than what we've been doing. I'm going to invite you to find some paper or a journal and to write down your prayers at home, either by yourself um, or with your family today as, as our way of praying together. We invite you to, to lift up the prayers that you have for our world, for your neighbor, um, for yourself. In our scripture today, we hear about how Thomas wants something so desperately from God. He won't settle until he gets to see Jesus himself, until Jesus shows up for him. Today, as you um, write your prayers, I invite you to just think about that for yourself. Where are you longing? Where are you desperate for Jesus to show up? What places of fear or worry concern or doubt do you want God to show up in? Write those down, pray those in your own home, and then of course if you have specific prayer requests that you'd like our staff to be praying for, you can text those in too and we'll be praying um, with you, uh, along with you for those prayers. So I invite you to pause the video if you want um, and to take a little moment to have some prayer time and then join us back for the rest of the service. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Hey, a few ways you can continue to stay engaged and help in our community is to continue to support both the Little Free Pantry and the Phone Tree. Keep making calls, keep checking in on each other. Let us know if there are any uh, specific pastoral care needs that you or someone you know of has feel free to reach out to me at seth at lakeparklutheran.com. Also, we do have some uh, resources available from generous offerings from people in our Lake Park community. If you are in need of food help or uh, some other things, please uh, reach out to me and we can see if we can help you with that. We're here to support everybody the best that we possibly can, so don't hesitate to reach out to me. Also, I hope uh, some of you were able to enjoy the watch party and join with the adult ed last night. That was really fun. Thank you, Anne, for doing that. We'll join again next Saturday evening at 7 p.m. and continue the discussion. Also join us this week on Wednesday night for our midweek service, and then we'll have a little happy hour with me on Zoom after that. Also, another way you could start to engage a lot of the world right now is stress baking. So put that to good use. Bake things that when we can join back together again in the flesh and have fellowship, our freezer is fully stocked with things to nibble on. So bake cookies and bars and stuff like that. Put it in your freezer, and when we can come back to church, you can bring them there, and we'll have a great backstock for celebrating when we're reunited. Also, join us right after this service. Uh, go back to the YouTube channel and there will be a fresh stream, but I am going to have uh, Pastor Kim, formerly known as Vicar Kim, if any of you remember. She was a vicar with us uh, at the beginning of that program probably over a decade ago now. And so she's going to join me on Zoom and we're going to get to chat and you can send any questions in the comments on the side there and We'll try to answer them, but it'll be great to see Kim and get to talk to her. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you all again soon.
Now receive this blessing. May the God who comes to stand with us in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our doubt, in the midst of our confusion, and in the midst of our worries, come and be near to you this day and grant you peace. Amen.